Hello, good morning. We are now beginning the conference call to discuss the results of Brazil, Angel Brazil Energy for the first quarter 2022. My name is Rafael Bosi, I'm the manager of um, the company. And we, you are in listen only mode. And as we open the Q&A question, you can address your question, post your questions uh, using the platform and on our site, which is www.ng.com.br slash investidores, a slide presentation and the company's earnings release in addition to other documents as we disclose to the market and we provide the detailed information or more detail on our operations, new projects and the analysis of the financial statements of the period. Before proceeding, I would like to clarify that all statements that may be made during this conference call regarding business outlook of the company should be treated as forecasts depending on the country's macroeconomic conditions of the performance and the regulation of the electric sector besides other variables. Therefore, they are due to changes. Journalists who wish to ask a question can send their questions to the company's press office. I turn the call to Malta, the financial director of energy, who will be with me during the presentation to begin our activities. Malta, you may proceed. Thank you, Rafael. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here once again in this event to present the results of the first quarter 2022 of our company. On slide five, we can see the highlights related to the first quarter 2022. On the graph to the left, we can see an increase of the EBITDA and the net income of 8.8% and 21.9% respectively. On the right, we can see some of the important drivers that we have for the results of the first quarter of this year. And one of them is the increase of our average net sales price up 9.9% and together with a small volume of sales of energy in this period amounted to um, revenue of 203 million reals. We had a lower cost of fuel for this quarter and this was driven by the sale of uh, thermoelectric um, complex George Lacerda in 2021. On the other hand, we also had the volume of uh, purchase, which was quite significant of uh, Georges Lacerda, which was contracted at the moment we sold the asset. We also had a very important contribution of 78 million in the segment of trans trans transmission. And this impact is only economic. And this is due to the remuneration of the financial asset of construction according to a specific accounting practice. But that we would like to reinforce that these assets have already started to generate some cash, considering that we have them uh, already with our operation uh, started and the amount of the REP of uh, Gralha Azul in Novistad amounts to 650 million a year. Considering that those assets started operating in the past few months, in order to make it easier for us to understand the impact on our result, considering this uh, transmission results, we are going to start to disclose a reconciliation from the corporate result and the regulatory result that in essence would recognize, for example, as uh, RAP revenue, the assets in the mobilized and cost of operation and etc. So we understand that with this, you will be able to understand in a more clear way all the impact of our assets related to transmission on our 
results and cash flow. We had some important variation in our financial result year on year, considering that we have an important variation of inflation rate in the two quarters. So with this, the effect was only 8 million in the financial result. But we would like to reinforce that the impact of for each of the quarter was quite significant. And in this quarter, for example, we had the financial expenses of 974 million and financial expenses of uh, 150 million. And this reduced our net income in the two quarters. Next one, please. On slide six, uh, we have the highlights and I would like to draw your attention to the completion of implementation of Gralha Azul in the end of April, we had insured 77% of the REP. And in May, we hope that we are already going to reach 95% of the REP already assured. We'd like to say that REP annual of Gralha Azul is 275 million reals. The Novistad project is according to the implementation schedule. We have already insured for April 50% of the REP. And the expectation is that uh, by the end of the fourth quarter, we have the REP completed 100%, which is fixed in the amount of 370 million a year. As we have already announced, we have completed in March the acquisition of uh, the photovoltaic complexes Paracatu and also Floresta that added about 218 megawatt hour to our portfolio. And we have reaffirmed our triple A rating at the national level. And uh, we have recently seen the alignment of our growth strategy and as a result, we approved the wind project uh, Serra do Açuruá, and the approval was during the board that was held yesterday. The installed capacity is estimated at 880 megawatts, and the investment will amount to 265 million reals. We'd like to mention that this project is a high quality project. It has a capacity factor which is high, about 50%. It already has the access um, reports and most of the lands have already been regulated and regularized. And I could say that they are very, it's very close to its implementation and we are going deeper into our studies, but we believe in this project. We place our bets on this project and we are working with a controlling company so that by the end of their year, we make a decision in relation to the implementation of this project. As I said, our expectations are very positive and very high. And with this project, we are going to increase our project pipeline to about three giga. 1.7 giga is wind and 1.4 is solar. We approve the distribution of complementary dividends for the fiscal year of 2021 in the amount of 549.8 million. We launched issued our sustainability report. It's already available. I would highly recommend you reading this report whose content is very rich and it will help us understand our business. And lastly, NG Group decided that the hydrogen projects in Brazil are going to be conducted and developed by NG Brazil Energia and we already have a company which is fully dedicated to this business. And we believe that as of now, considering this focus 
on project uh, development of hydrogen inside the company. We will discuss our perspectives along the next quarters. We are going to disclose what we have been doing and what we believe to be the development opportunities of projects of this nature. I'm going to turn the call to Rafael and then I'll be back to make some additional comments on our financial performance. Rafael, you have the floor. Thank you, Malta. Now we are going to talk about ESG indicators. We have already disclosed on a quarterly basis our performance in the for the years. Uh, we also discussed um, social environmental KPIs along the 10 years already, but now we have this in a clear way during our presentation. And in the first quarter, we report a consistent improvement in our data. And of course, they are related to the divestment that was made of the thermoelectrical uh, complex George Lacerda has mentioned previously in the presentation. So we have uh, you can see the reduction of uh, total emissions and other impressive data. And this reflects uh, the number of women in the workforce. And uh, the complex had men, uh, mostly men working in the assets. So this also, this initiative brings uh, more diversity to our workforce, and we are going to continue report uh, re information related to ESG. And as we sell Pampasu, we are going to provide more information and the divestment prices have been pressed down in the previous period due to the cost of implementation of the projects, the increase in the interest rate, as well as restrictions in the supply chain. And we have seen that there's space, uh, opportunity to charge the right price so that we can continue our growth according to the strategic plan of the company. Moving on uh, to, to talking about the commercial strategy. So this is our share in the market. And there has been a drop in relation to the first quarter, 2021. And this was a result basically of the hydroelectric crisis that we went through last year. We had to reduce the sales pace in order to preserve the energy in the portfolio so that we can have an hedge in order to mitigate the against the electric energy def, deficit generation. And we are going to be summarizing the acceleration of commercialization for the next, next quarters. Now moving on with our presentation, you had access to the presentation, so I would like to draw your attention to some points and what we have been celebrating because we have accelerating uh, our implementation. Uh, we have 45 of uh, the turbines with the bases already contracted. The construction of the substation has moved more than one third of the physical progress and leading to an overall physical pro progress of about 14.5%. And uh, the perspective is that the operation will start uh, by the fourth quarter of this year and with a full commercial operation in the beginning of the first quarter of 2022, increasing our install capacity. The next capacity, which also made headway in a significant manner, the, I'm talking about Gralia Zoo at the end of the quarter, we had the right to re receive 77% of the RAP, as Malta mentioned, but in April, we had another progress reaching 87%. And now in May, we stand at 95% uh, of the receiving of the RAP. And we will see, we will reach 100% in March next year. 
considering that there are some regulatory related restrictions that depend on the the, the transmission line which is still to start operating that is planned to start in march next year so we are anticipate anticipating the operation the start of operation and this will help us flow the transmission of energy and another project of a transmission line in the state and there has always been a significant increase reaching in the beginning of May, in the, on the 1st of May, 50% of the RAP. And the project continues advancing and is uh, likely to complete by the end of this year. On slide related to the expansion of Geral, we are updating the expansion of the asset we do not have a lot of updates in addition to the excellent uh, performance of the of the plant and it, and the independent independent uh, board of related parties is going to consider a transference to the controller to uh, Brazil in it NG Brazil Energia. And next slide. Uh, still talking about expansion. We have the project at a more advanced stage of development, and those plants are not uh, under construction yet. They are at a stage of being authorization for construction and the news that Malta has already mentioned in the beginning of the presentation is the inclusion of uh, Serra da Surua in the, the wind complex into our portfolio and uh, this is going to be implemented in Bahia with installed capacity of eight, 880 megawatts as Malta commented, it's at a very advanced stage of development now, and it's likely to be in operation in time to use the regulatory benefit and discount of the transmission tariff. Malta, over to you to address the financial performance. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, this slide shows a little bit of the soundness of our performance in the financial aspect. We can see the indicators that would reaffirm our financial discipline and how we allocate our capital very efficiently. On the right, we can see the evolution of our investments and our performance, financial performance from 2016 to 2021. Next. This slide shows the evolution of our revenues. Uh, we have read mentioned in the highlights that the increase of prices and volume of energy added 3 billion to our revenue. We had a reduction of the volume of operations of trading of 95 million, but we also had a reduction in the volume of purchase. So the impact on EBITDA was not, was negligent. And assets in transmission, the revenue is reduced because it's just natural that when we reach to a more advanced to a step of implementation, we reduce the capex. So when we compare the capex of both quarters, we had a reduction. And as a result of this, there was also a drop in the construction revenue. You will see that on the EBITDA, as I mentioned before, the impact of this transmission activity was 78 million reals. Next, please. This is a little bit of the result of TAG in this quarter. It added to our EBITDA 173 million in the first quarter 2021. The result 
of equivalence was something about 175 million. So with the performance uh, quarter on quarter is quite consistent. Next. Here shows the evolution of EBITDA. We have already mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the main impact, and I'm going to repeat, price and volume of energy, fuels, we had a drop because of the sale of Georges Lacerda. On the other hand, there was an increase in the volume of purchase of energy that was driven by the sale of Georges Lacerda and the effect of the assets of transmission that added 78 million to our EBITDA. Here is a graph with the net income change. The main effect uh, that impacted this evolution or this change was the impacts that had already been mentioned in our EBITDA. This slide shows basically the information about our indebtedness level, net debt uh, over EBITDA is still very comfortable. There was an increase from two times to 2.2 times as a result of the acquisition of uh, Floresta and Paracatu complexes. When we are incorporated the debts of the SPEs, and we also had the payment of dividends in this quarter. So these were the main justifications for the increase in this ratio of net debt over EBITDA. We closed the quarter with a debt of 16 billion reals and a cash of 4.6 billion reals. Here you can see the profile and the composition of our debt, the breakdown of our debt according to the index, the indexing uh, aspect. To, and um, a share is prefixed and is going to become mature in 2022. We'd like to remind you that we had a debt swap of some uh, swap from CDI at the end of 2020. And this decision was very assertive and correct. And uh, it has added a lot of value to our financial results. So we continue with a significant position of uh, the IPCA in the breakdown of our debt and the nominal cost for the quarter ended at uh, 14.5%. This slide shows our history of investments that was very significant for this year. And for this year, we have estimated 3.4 billion reals. And most of this volume is going to be used in the construction of Santo Agostinho. In 2023, we basically, we have Santo Agustin also, and we hope, we hope that we are going to approve the investment in Asuruá and that this volume of investment as of 2023 should grow. And this is the evolution of our payment of dividends and last year we paid a hundred percent of our adjusted result equivalent to 6.2 percent of dividend yield and with this i end the presentation and i will open the q and a session thank you malta I would like to remind you that the question must be sent using the Q&A and not the chat. Use the Q&A and not the chat. 
we have two questions already coming from Bruno Teixeira, our individual investor. The first question is related to the transfer of Giral. And his question is, in case of uh, completion, it's a bit uh, difficult or complex to answer this time. So he asked what would be the potential increment of the of revenue generation? Is that a trigger to unlock the beginning of this transfer? Thank you for the question. It's always important to mention that Girao is an asset who, which is controlled by our controlling company. So we do not have a lot of access to information or more precise information about Girao, considering that this asset may be transferred at some time in the future. Therefore, we, may, we try to maintain independence from NG Brazil Energy and Giral. So we do not have access to this information as a result of what I've just mentioned. But as this process gets mature, of course, we are going to be conveying this information and reporting any additional data about this process should there be any transfer of this asset. Thank you, Malta. The second question comes from okay, considering that uh, the recovery of the, res the reservoirs in the south, should we expect an increase of revenue? And he also gives a tip to the answer. It might not be translated into revenue, considering the drop in the spot price. I do not know if I quite understood the question, but I'm going to make some considerations in relation to it. Yes, we have uh, seen this. Uh, there has been a uh, rise in the reservoirs levels. And uh, of course, this will impact the GSF. And this is what we have seen. We have seen that GSF has been behaving more steadily in relation to the previous year. And also the spot price for the quarter has been close to uh, the expected. But as to GSF and the spot price, we tend to be more flexible or not in terms of the reserve we have in our portfolio in order to protect from the GSF. So uh, an increase of revenue or mitigation of the prices considering the impact of GSF will depend a lot on our prospects in terms of hydrology and also the levels of uh, reports. So our strategy along the year may change in order to be aligned with those prospects of hydrology and energy price. So uh, trying to answer in an objective manner, it may or may not impact our revenue. But yes, the MRE is very important because we have to remember that considering the mechanism, this mechanism, it's replaced by the theoretical optimization tariff, which is a tariff much below of the contracted energy in the short term. And the values are below 15 reals, the megawatt hour. And even if we produce more, the, the generated revenue is not going to be very significant. And in the long term, we purchase energy in the MRE, considering that other plants have a generation, a higher generation because their hydrology situation is better. Even though we are present in most in all regions of the country, but that happens. Mm -hmm. 
Bruno, that if we had not answered your question, please let us know and we will provide more clarifications and we can talk more about it. Next question comes from Leonardo, Athena analyst. He's asking about CapEx, Malkan, out of the total of 3.45 billion, how much would be addressed to Santo Agostinho? Santa, Santa Agustin, 1.73 billion reals, including an investment that we made in Floresta and Paracatu complexes. So this is basically it. Santo Agustin, 1.6, Floresta and Paracatu, 700 million, Novo Estado, 700 million, and the maintenance of assets, 300 million reals. So this is the breakdown of this capex of 3.45 billion reals. Thank you. Malta, I'm going to ask another question by Leonardo. He's asking about the volume of sales. Why is there a discrepancy from what we have uh, in terms of contracting contracted sales and the volume of sales recorded for the period? I think he's comparing it to our energy balance. Leonard would like to remind you the energy balance does not consider the GSF. and this is discounted from the commercial capacity of the plants and does not consider the flexibility of the agreements right malta yes exactly this would be the answer shall we change the focus a little let's now talking about long-term strategy malta pedro is an analyst of trilha he's asking us to give some more details about green hydrogen we're not talking about projects right Malta but we can talk about the structure of the company with that purpose yes I think it's important to mention that we already have a team which is very experienced these are people who have operated in hydrogen projects for quite a while so there's one officer that has already joined our team and he already has a team already structured and they have been working on the expansion of the team we have been talking to the market we have already considered different opportunities and in one of the cases we have already presented an mou and for the time being we cannot provide more details or mention the company involved but i believe that in the first quarters we are going to disclose more information in relation to this mou so in addition to this we have also considered uh, other companies to uh, consider or evaluate the opportunities of uh, partnerships we'd like to mention that the German government is about to launch an um, invitation for the purchase of green hydrogen with incentivized um, resources by the German government. And one of the projects that we are considering and we are discussing also may be related to this may be related to this expectation of uh, use opportunities of this auction so this is as much as uh, the most that i can disclose to you at the moment thank you malta another question focused on commercialization if when looking at the future you you tend to focus on the free market and the captive market. The market has seen that we have focused on the free market uh, in order to grow. We were one of the first companies to develop a project uh, of renewables 
and 100% uh, of the energy was directed to the free market considering the low prices and the comp competitive market of the regulated market and with expansion of the free market we can see that the opportunities are going to be offered so i think this is a market consensus it's not something that is uh, only limited to us and our competitors are also going to be focusing on the free market and the perspectives are very positive when we see this expansion and we are ready to make sales in this regard. And we already have a, a platform, uh, energy marketplace. We already have a digital product in order to streamline the contracting process. So we are looking at the migration and capture of with smaller clients to include in our portfolio. Would you like to add anything, Malta? No, this is basically that, Rafael. We would just like to remind you that our latest projects, uh, the ones that we have implemented, they were all made feasible uh, with the uh, energy sold in the free market, Asurua. For Asurua, we managed to implement it. It, it's, it's going to operate in the free markets. I think this is a trend and uh, we believe that we are we will have good opportunities of sales in this market. And this is the path we want to take. Perfect Malta. Now going back to debt, Lucas, individual investor, he says, we see low indebtedness level and we see some projects underway. Are you planning on capt a new uh, captures? Uh, so it's important to say or to discuss about our indebtedness because the uh, individuals are usually concerned about this indebtedness level. Yes, as uh, was mentioned, our debt level is very comfortable yet. We have a lot of room to finance new projects. Asurua, that would include Asurua, where we have the opportunity to finance part of the equity of this project. So. I would say that if we approve a surua, we are going to have a, a, cap, a capture of uh, resources. And even with the implementation of a surua, we are going to continue with a very comfortable situation in terms of indebtedness level. And we may even keep a high level of dividend distribution. Okay, Malta, thank you. We have a lot of questions here, which is so good. So it's very important to communicate with the market. There is a question related to the review of fiscal guarantee of Eletrobras. And if this was a topic that was addressed in the privatization, would you like to make any comments about it? Yes, this was something that has already been addressed. And it's important to mention that the generators had an expectation of a much larger a reduction of the fiscal guarantee that did not materialize in the end. And the series that was used for the calculation of this fiscal guarantee reduction was did not consider the year of 2020. And if this year had been considered in that series, the number of the reduction of fiscal guarantees would be much would have been much higher. The generation agents played a very important role so that it would be possible to change such perspective of reduction of fiscal guarantee but this was not what happened so whatever is uh, estimated is going to be maintained 
according to the terms of privatization of Eletrobras. Okay, perfect. Let's change ways now. The company is a platform of investment and we have lots of topics to be addressed. So we can talk about the gas transportation segment. Uh, the question is, what are the plans for the growth of TAG? What are the plans for the expansion of the gas pipelines considering the gas market? What we have uh, reinforced is that the market was very anxious in relation to this, but we have seen evolution in the market and this is an evolution that is going to play out in the medium term. Would you like to add anything, Malta? Yes, I would say that this market is still in the process of uh, maturation. We have already noticed, noticed some movements that will bring about some levels of optimism. We noticed that there has been interest in the use of the gas pipeline. And uh, we also look at the expansion opportunities. We'd like to mention that we have already signed an agreement to connect the terminal Sergip to our grid, our network. It's not such a significant project in terms of uh, volume for TAG, but it's an investment of about 300 million with a revenue of approximately 40 million per year. A COD estimated for the beginning of 2024. And we also have an agreement which is being signed with the municipality of Fortaleza, which is Ga GAS42, which is the reinforcement of the Northeast network with a capex of uh, 270 million and revenue close to 42 million and the COD for the mid 2023. This all shows that there are opportunities coming up and we have prospects that uh, opportunities will grow along the next years. And this makes us very optimistic because when the agreements with Petrobras expire, we'll have a way to optimize the use of the gas pipeline. Thank you, Malta. We also had some additional questions. Lucas is asking the status of Projeto Serra do Asuruá. Is there a technical report? Yes, we have 880 mega of installed capacity. And this is a project that we are trying to develop in the short term. Moving on to another segment and now talking about uh, the question asked about uh, by Vinicius. V Vinicius is an uh, individual investor. He's asking if we would like to, if you're interested in taking part in the transmission auction and he's asking what's our level of interest. Yes, we're interested in this auction and we, uh, we are, uh, we are, probably going to take part. Our investment team is evaluating this, these projects. And we know that in the latest uh, auctions, we were not very competitive. The prices were much below of what we expected so that a project of this nature could be feasible those auctions that are going to be held in June and also at the end of the year, those auctions have uh, larger lots than the previous auctions and 
this would be very selective in terms of players. So we believe that the competition is going to be limited to some large companies whose balance and uh, capacity to finance and deliver the projects. And as a result, we believe that we are maybe more competitive. We are reinforcing our team of development of projects and transmission so that we can share experience and evaluate how we can be more competitive than we were in the past. So we are doing our homework. so that we can be more competitive than we were in the previous auctions. Thank you, Malta. We're getting close to the end of question. There's another question by Vinicius. He's asking if you would like to increase your share in TAG or you have any interest in acquiring new companies. No, not for the time being. We do not consider any possibility in this regard. We have a partner who is a financial investor and just like us, he's very happy with the performance of this asset. The returns are much be, uh, beyond of what we had expected at first. So for the time being, we do not see any perspective. Uh, we are not uh, considering uh, increasing our share in tag i would say that our partner is not interested in uh, changing his position a uh, question by Felipe molina in relation to uh, anticipated renewal of concessions is there any possibility of this to progress this year? It's a question which is quite difficult to answer. We have seen the a goodwill on the side of the government to discuss this, and we are monitoring this to determine whether or not this is going to be done before the elections. But it's a bit complicated now. Yes, Rafael, this is an election year. Uh, we have challenges in terms of approving projects and the challenges are greater in this period of the year. It's a project that have very important issues related to the electric sector. As Rafael mentioned, we have seen a major effort from the government to approve this project and we are waiting and we are expecting the project to be approved still this year. We see that this could be an opportunity for the government to uh, raise funds to address the pressure on energy prices, a complaint from the consumers and also bring in more proceeds, more resources, and address fiscal, fiscal issues of the country. As I said already, since it's, it's an election year, the challenges are even greater. Thank you, Malta. We came to the end of the Q&A session and we we addressed all the questions posted up to the moment and the ir department is available should you have any other further questions you can get in touch through our site and my contact is also in the presentation we would like to thank you for your interest in our company and uh, we would also like to thank you for the questions you posted would you like to make some final remarks yes i would like to thank you for attending this conference it's also a pleasure to be discussing our business the ir team 
and I are at your disposal should you have any questions or require any additional clarification. I wish you have a wonderful weekend. And with this, we end the results conference of the first quarter 2022 of Engie Plus Energy. Have a nice weekend, everyone.